Welcome to the overview on Mendelian genetics. This can be found in your textbook in sections 11.1 .1 and 11.2. Uh, we're going to answer a couple of questions today, but at the end of it, we want to know what Gregor Mendel contributed to our understanding of genetics. So the first question we're going to look at is, um, if I can get my, there we go. Uh, where does an organism get its unique characteristics? And we all know that genes are passed down from one organism to another. So genes passed <coughs> from generation to generation. And we call this study of heredity um, genetics. So Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, was the father of genetics. He's considered the father of genetics, and he worked with pea plants. And he worked with pea plants because they were a good model um, for looking at different traits. They were fairly simple. Uh, they were small, so they were easy to work with. Uh, they reproduced quickly. And they reproduced a lot of offspring in one season. So lots of offspring. So he wanted to look at different traits or different characteristics of these pea plants. And so what he did is he took what we call true breeding or purebred plants and cross them together. So this tall plant right here would, if allowed to pollinate itself, would make more tall plants. This short plant, if it was allowed to pollinate itself, would only make more short plants. So when I cross these two, he wanted to see what would happen. So he, uh, he fertilize the plants by hand. And what he found, if this is, P stands for parent generation or parental generation, F1 stands for offspring or first filial generation. Uh, what he found was all of the offspring were tall. So all offspring became tall when we mixed purebred against purebred. All offspring show just a trait of one of the parents. People used to think that these traits would combine and and and, and meld together, and so you'd get kind of an in between. But what he saw was these all of his pea plants became tall and so he did know one of his one of his first conclusions was that we do have a factor which we call genes that pass uh, pass information um, pass traits from one generation to another The other conclusion that he made was that uh, we had to have some kind of dominance happening. So he called it the principle of dominance, meaning one trait had to dominate the other. Dominance. So tall here is dominating short, and so all of the all of the offspring become tall. If we look at seed shape, all of these the round seeds, when crossed with wrinkled seeds, all of the offspring are becoming round. So round is dominant over wrinkled. So we have uh, dominant traits and we have recessive traits. Dominant and recessive. So we get 
individuals get their characteristics, which are determined by factors, which we know as genes, um, that are passed from one parental generation to the next generation. The next question is, well, how do we get different forms of a gene distributed to our offspring? Uh, and so one of the things that Mendel wondered after he got his F1 generation was, well, what happened to my recessive traits? He wondered, did it disappear? Um, is it being masked? What happened? And so what he said was, all right, I'm going to let my F1 generation self-pollinate and I'll see what I get. And so he did that and what he found was in his second filial generation the recessive trait showed back up. And so he made a couple of more con he made another conclusion. He said that alleles must separate. So a new term here, alleles separate. And another word for separate is segregation. Genes are going to have more than one type of factor. Genes are going to control the traits. But these traits may have different forms. So alleles are different forms of the same trait or the same gene. Different forms of same gene. So he said the alleles must separate. Well, when are they going to separate? So he said uh, the alleles must separate in a time when we're going to get uh, information being moved around. And so he said they probably separate during gamete formation, which would be during meiosis. So during gamete formation. So uh, what he found was that in F2 generation, uh, he had to have some short left, and he found that three-fourths of his plants had the dominant trait. And one-fourth had the recessive trait. And we can write that a couple of different ways. Uh, this is one way. We could also do it in percentages, 75% to 25%. Uh, but we could also do it in a ratios form, so three dominant plants to every one recessive plant. Uh, but the dominant was going to have more. The dominant uh, was going to mask the recessive as much as it could. So he said, during the formation of gametes, we must be able to split up our alleles. So this tall plant, uh, might be uh, might have a genotype uh, that is big T little t and so during gamete formation for this gene for this trait I'm going to get those two alleles of big T to go into one gamete a little t to go into the other and the same thing happened with this plant when those gametes fertilize one another then we have some more variability and we have three possible options big T big T uh, these are called genotypes, by the way. Genotype is what genes are actually there. Uh, so we could have big T, big T, which we call homozygous dominant. Uh, homo means the same, uh, and they're both dominant traits. And that would give us a phenotype, or what the organism looks like, or what trait is expressed. That would give us the phenotype of tall. We could also get big T, little t, and big T, little t is called heterozygous. Hetero meaning different, and so we have different alleles in the same cell for the same trait. Heterozygous, because I have a dominant allele, is going to give me the dominant phenotype. And then the final option we could have is homozygous recessive recessive. Homo, again, meaning the same, so we have the same alleles in our cell for this trait, and they're both recessive, and so the only uh, phenotype that it could show would be the recessive trait, short. 
So he showed that uh, we've got alleles segregating during gamete formation. The same thing can happen during a two-factor cross if we're looking at two separate, uh, excuse me, two separate genes, two separate factors. Uh, those factors are not going to play a role in which allele goes where. The alleles are going to segregate independent of one another. And what he called this principle was the principle of independent assortment. It doesn't matter where this R goes right here. This Y can go into any one of the gametes. So, uh, Gregor Mendel did four things for us that we still use today in modern genetics. He said that characteristics are determined by genes which are passed down from generation to generation. And one of the alleles to each gene is going to be dominant to the other. The third thing that he noticed were that genes would segregate or alleles would segregate during gamete formation. And finally, the last thing that he noticed was that um, the principle of independent assortment. If you're looking at more than one gene, that those alleles for those two genes were not going to affect uh, the segregation of one another. All right, that's it for today. Uh, I'll see everybody in class.